what's up everybody? Uh, I want to go over my personal top 10 fighters that I'm most excited about watching fight. Uh, this isn't the top 10 guys, pound for pound, who I think are the greatest, but just uh, my personal top 10. Uh, I'm going to count it down 10 to 1, and then at the end, you guys can leave your comments, tell me what you think, agree or disagree, uh, and I'll read what you think, and then I'll respond. Uh, at number 10, I've got uh, Nicholas Walters. Uh, I really like watch him fight. Uh, he's the most exciting uh, little guy uh, with the, you know, Lomachenko and Leo Santa Cruz and Abney Mars and Gary Russell and Brigadel, that whole crew down there at the bottom uh, of the weight class. Uh, for me, he's the funnest, most explosive guy to watch. Um, at number nine, I've got uh, uh, Deontay Wilder, um, heavyweight. I'm a big fan of his. Been a big fan of his now for six years when uh, he was on Fox Sports and uh, knocking everybody out with that right hand. Uh, I thought it was the most impressive punch in boxing. And then he, when he stepped up to Stavern, uh it kind of showed the difference in class between the journeyman he's been fighting and everybody. But I really wish him the best luck, and I, I, I believe in him. Um, I believe he's learning. After every fight, he's getting better and better. So, uh, I hope he beats uh, Tyson Fury and Povachkin and uh, ultimately Klitschko. Uh, and number eight, I got Amir Khan. Uh, recently, he's kind of pissed me off because uh, I don't like him pulling people heads down uh, and crap, kind of like Klitschko does. And I, I really, I think it's the worst move in boxing. I hate it. Uh, but he's always in action-packed fights. I would never miss one of his fights. Uh, at number seven, I got Adrian Broner. And there's a, re a couple of reasons for that. One, I love his flamboyancy. I love the shows that he puts on uh, inside the ring. Uh, he's also uh, from Cincinnati, so it allows me to go up to the U.S. Bank and watch his fights. Uh, but then I, I kind of get pissed off with the videos he puts out and some of the antics he does with his boys, uh, known as the man camp. Uh, I hope he gets more serious about, uh, about boxing because he can't afford too many more losses before people won't take him serious or get up for his fights. Um, at number six, uh, I've got uh, probably number six. Timothy Bradley, just because we know he's not going to knock out anybody, but he's a great fighter. And what I really, really enjoy about him is he'll if if you're if you're a, a, a prodding the head, you know, a flat footed fighter, he'll he'll engage with you, he'll exchange with you, uh, and that's exciting. Sometimes he gets him in trouble, but uh, he's shown that he's got a really good chin that he can recover. And uh, I think he does a lot for the sport. Um, he's one of two guys I know that have uh, been pushing Vada and uh, 365, 24-7 testing year round, uh, uh, along with uh, Donaire. So I respect that. Uh, at number five, I got Lucas, uh, the machine, Matisse. I've always been a fan of the machine. Um, I really like him. He took a loss against Postel, but I hope he, you know, he, pick, he, he picks himself up and uh, drives on and uh, isn't gun shy because his, he hurt his eye in that fight. Couldn't see, he said. Um, his fights are very explosive, very exciting. So we'll see. Uh, number four, I got Terrence Crawford, who put on an amazing performance uh, last Saturday. Huge Terrence Crawford fan. I've watched every fight of his on HBO. Uh, he gets better and better. I, my favorite fight was the Gamboa fight, but a lot of people will say, and I can't argue with him, that this was his best performance, the one he just had. Uh, he really was pissed off at uh, 
that uh, Asian from uh, Montreal because of the smack talk they were doing, including uh, his uh, his trainer was talking a lot of shit. So it really pissed him off. And it showed in the ring. He went after him and kicked ass. Number three, I got Kovalov. Kovalov is a freaking man. Out of all the fighters in my top ten, I think the last four years have been the most impressive. Uh, he really doesn't have a home base. So basically he fights everybody else in their backyard and he hands their ass to him. I mean, he's, and he has flaws. He's been knocked down, but he's just a devastating, the crusher is, is hell, he killed a guy in the ring. I mean, this guy is no joke and, and nobody wants to fight the guy, you know? Number three is Kovalov. So number two, I got Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Manny Pacquiao is the reason why I got it back into boxing. Um, I started watching boxing as a kid because of Mike Tyson. He's still my all-time favorite fighter. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I gawked like a little girl when I was a kid watching him fight because uh, he truly was to me the first boogeyman, you know. Even on before him, Marvelous Hagler, after I learned and studied, you know, his career, uh, he was truly a boogeyman too. So, Manny Pacquiao's got one more fight, and then he's going to retire and concentrate on politics, and he'll come off my list because this is an active list, this is an all-time list. Uh, but I love Manny Pacquiao, I love his career, I love uh, everybody's fought. Uh, the only, the only knock on Pacquiao is I did not care for the catchway fights that he, like he fought Cotto at and stuff. I still feel he would have beat those fighters and uh, so I don't understand the catchway. Um, the best main Pacquiao I ever saw was uh, against Margarito, which I consider his toughest fight. Uh, of course he put an ass beating on Margarito, fucked up his orbital bone, but I'm telling you, that fight did more damage to Manny Pacquiao than any fight before or after he's been in. That was a tough fight for Pacquiao. You could tell when he's getting interviewed, he was kind of fucked up. Uh, and then number one spot, uh, no surprise, Triple G. Um, been a huge fan of his since he premiered on HBO against uh, Prosca at the Turning Stone and uh, Casino. Uh, I told my son, who's now in the military and not in the house anymore, but I remember turning him saying, you know, uh, Manny Pacquiao might have some competition as my favorite fighter because uh, I really like what Triple G did. Um, and he seems to get more exciting with every fight. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. It's, it's, it is a big drama show and he seems to do something amazing in every fight. Um, I don't consider him his career uh, fighting uh, tomato cans. I think he's fought some really good fighters. I, I think Martin Murray is still a really good fighter. I think he fucked up Gil real bad. I thought I think uh, he fucked up Rosada and Stevens and the Japanese guy. Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I can see it, but I don't want to try to pronounce it. I pronounce it wrong. Uh, I thought Monroe was a good showcase fight. Uh, all these guys uh, are better fighters for career-wise for fighting Triple G. Uh, it just some of them took some damage, like Gil, you know. But, uh, oh, they all took damage, but what I'm saying is it's open doors for him. It's going to open doors for Monroe. It's open doors for Gil with Cotto. It's open doors for Curtis Steven, Rosado. Uh, Rubio was a real tough fighter. He wiped the floor with Rubio. I guess Rubio didn't like, like that power. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's my number one. Honorable mentions, David Lemieux, he's a fun fighter to watch. I really like David Lemieux, even before the Triple G fight, uh, and I'll continue to support him. Earl Spence, up and comer, can't wait to see him in with some tough guys. I think he's a great fighter. Uh, I love Sean Porter. Uh, I, I can actually see myself next year, if Sean Porter wins his next fight, uh, and I think he can, Sean Porter moving in to my top 10 around six to eight. Uh, that's basically my top 10. My top five most hated fighters that I can't stand. Number one, Peter Quillen, Kid Chocolate, can't stand him and his bullshit. 
Danny Garcia, he's fucking afraid to fight anybody. Uh, he did take the Matisse fight, but he fucking did every trick in the book to, you know, so many low bowls and headbutts and all kinds of stupid shit. Uh, don't like Mayweather. I respect Mayweather's career. Uh, we can't can't say otherwise when he makes that claim of being TV because he's 49 and 0. And no matter what you and I say, think and say, we can't take that away from him. But I don't think he's challenged himself. And I, I, I he's never fought nobody in their prime. And I think that that's going to hurt him long term. Uh, number four, Miguel Vasquez. I can't stand that motherfucker. That's that's a poor man's version of Mayweather. He is the most boring fighter I've ever seen. Uh, and then number five, I'd probably say that's kind of a tough one for me. Uh, but probably, probably Danny Jacobs because I don't think he any, has any business boxing. I think uh, he's been protected and uh, he'll get his ass kicked against Peter Cole. But who knows? They're best friends, so they might fake it. I don't know, but. I think as far as a boxer, he's a joke, but as a human being, he's, he's a hero because he did beat cancer, and that's the best victory of all. But I know what you guys think. You guys uh, leave a comments, tell me what you think. I'll, rep I'll respond. We can talk about it. Uh, you can subscribe if you want. Uh, I appreciate you watching my video, and uh, take care, everybody. See ya.